Shut up and sit down. Hello, ladies and gents. With Ed Walker dropping this fall and everyone making their predictions and talking about what we'll be doing and where we'll be going, I thought I'd touch on something slightly different, a subject that I feel is often overlooked. One thing that I have always loved about this game is the development of characters' personalities. A perfect example of this would be Alpha Nine. To be completely frank, I could not stand him in A Realm Reborn, but I've honestly slowly come to love him throughout Heaven's Sword and up to this point in the current story. Now, everyone in the science has had a chance to grow and develop, and the Warrior Light is no exception to this. And honestly, he might be close to a bit of a mental breakdown, or at the very least, suffering from a couple of mental angsts. Now, before I get into this, I know this is a touchy subject, and I'm by no means trying to make light of mental health or mental issues. This is purely for discussion purposes. As well as I should also say, there will be small spoilers ahead for some MSQ and job quest. Anyway, so for starters, depending on if your character is a legacy character or not, the start of your journey as the Warrior Light in A Realm Reborn is a bit different, and I bring this up now because of one of the issues the Warrior of Light might be dealing with. Now, the Warrior Light has always been the first to step up whenever there's a crisis, and a lot of time without even really being given a choice in the matter. These things can easily start to weigh down on someone's mental state, even more so if you're a legacy character from 1.0 after everything that's happened during that time and the Battle of Cartagena. Now, there are a few instances showing that the Warrior Light is getting fed up with being the gopher and having everyone expect them to just come running and fight these massive battles. I'd be lying if I said the Warrior Light didn't enjoy the challenge, and helping people is kind of their thing, but there's always two sides to a coin. Heaven's Ward and Stormblood have some big examples of the Warrior Light starting to get fed up. And let me go ahead and say sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of any of these names for the rest of the video. Uh, they're not my strong point. An easy one to point out, in all honesty, is Emmanuel, uh, Harshafant's youngest brother for those that don't remember him. But yeah, for him trying to shift the blame towards us for ordering that uh, rebel to be shot down at the conference between Amric and Beofnir. Heck, taking a step back further, we also have the distrust and almost phobia of accepting drinks from anyone we don't know after the events of that same conference where we end up getting drugged. And there's also the uh, failed assassination attempt on Nanamino that the council tried to stick us with. Or not the council, the syndicate, I apologize. Now, the weight of being a hero is already heavy but it can be even heavier when you couldn't save someone. First and foremost in my mind would be Harshafant and Papalimo, who both sacrificed themselves to save us. This is a major kind of guilt that we would have to deal with as this figure that's there to protect everybody, to save everybody, to have someone else sacrifice themselves to save us. The Warrior Light is also always so busy trying to help others and save others that honestly, they never really give any time for themselves. Never give any thought to their own well-being or what they would want for themselves. This is honestly most evident when Amric asks us what they want for themselves. Not as a scion, not as the Warrior of Light, but as an individual. And the Warrior Light is completely dumbfounded. They have no answer for it. But, you know, stepping away from MSQ events, there are a few job quests and side quests that always stood out to me when it comes to the Warrior Light starting to get fed up with being the hero. 
I mean, one of the dancer quests has a good example. When a certain little Lalafell that owns Castle de Sol, or Coastal de Sol, excuse me, yet again, uh, acted like he was going to back out of a deal because he wasn't getting his way. A deal he was making to fund the dancing troupe that you had joined up with. And there's also the times in the Near Alliance Raid quest line where the uh, Lala siblings kind of just steamroll over the Warrior of Light and drag them along. Even to the point where we're actually given the dialogue option of asking, do I even have a choice? Now, uh, again, these are kind of small points here and there where the Warrior of Light has gotten kind of snarky and everything. But there are some darker moments. No pun intended, considering we're about to start talking about the Dark Knight job quest line. Um, honestly, it shows us a lot about the state of mind the Warrior Light is in. The Warrior Light has so much pent-up anger and resentment towards how people view them more as a weapon or a gopher than as a person that they end up manifesting their inner darkness as Frey, as his teacher, that has no issue telling people to F off as soon as they're any kind of disrespectful towards us. And they even admire Frey for this because they wish they could have done the same thing. The ironic thing is the whole time they're not realizing that they are actually the ones saying this. To me, this alone kind of shows that the Warrior Light's close to some kind of mental break or something it's about to get. Granted, all this gets worked out later during the quest line, but it's interesting food for thought. Just think about that for a minute. Here we are as the Warrior of Light, seeing this person standing next to us, this teacher standing next to us, and we're just admiring them because they're telling off every ungrateful SOB that we help out. But to that same person that we see Frey lashing out at, they're just looking at us, standing there talking to ourselves and lashing out at them. If that's not a cry for help, I'm not sure what is. The Dark Storyline even takes it a step further later by dealing with our grief and sorrow for honestly not being able to save like Harshafant and Yasil are a couple of the big ones among a lot of other people we haven't saved. But I bring them up primarily because at this point our inner darkness manifests as a young boy named Mist, who basically looks like Harshafant and Yassel had a child together. Now during this quest line, it's kind of iffy if your inner darkness is even along the same goals as you this time. Honestly, you spend most of the time trying to give people closure with less than great results. Um... The fact that Miss is manifested, manifested at all could show that the Warrior Light may be suffering from Survivor's Guild or something close to it. Honestly, this idea holds even more water if the Warrior Light that you're playing happens to be a legacy character, considering they survived the fall of Dalamud, they survived the Battle of Kartanud, only to wake up five years later and not know what happened to the soldiers that fought alongside them or find out that those soldiers died. This whole situation with the Warrior Light just slowly getting more snarky, more quick to call someone out, to me it just shows that they're they're starting to feel the wear, starting to feel the the wear and tear, the weight of being this symbol, being this ultimate hero of the world. And because of this, I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of quest line where the Warrior of Light kind of takes a step off of his normal path. And people are reminded why they respect him or her, depending on whatever gender you decide to play, but why they respect the Warrior of Light as this ultimate warrior. Not necessarily having them turn evil as much as start to stumble upon their path, I guess would be a good way of putting it. I think, personally, that'd be an amazing storyline for us to go across, however they would do it, whether it be in a new expansion, side story, whatever, but that's just my little thought on that. 
but there are a couple other times I could think of the Warrior of Light getting a bit short with people. And it's always when someone starts to expect them to do things. It's like, oh, you're the Warrior of Light. You'll, you know, we don't have to ask you. You'll just do it. It's your responsibility to do it because you're who you are. Like, eh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but to me, that would start to get old really fast. But, no, all this is mainly just my thoughts on the subject and how I've seen the Warrior of Light change over the years. And you may interpret it differently, and honestly, I really hope you do, because that's one of the best things about this game. We can all play the exact same story and get completely different outlooks on what happened, on how people have changed, how people have developed. With all that being said, I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on this, so feel free to leave a comment and tell me your theories on how the Warrior of Light is handling all this. And again, this is by no means making light of any kind of mental issues or mental health or anything of that sort. I just thought this would be an interesting subject to try and talk about and see what people thought us, the Warrior Light might be going through. But like I said, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and hey, if you're up for it, a like on the video always helps. And honestly, depending on how well these thoughts videos are received, I might make these kind of a regular thing. Um, not just on 14 or the Warrior Light, but, you know, any other subjects or any other games. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to see when a new video goes up. Till then, later.